Coming to you from the heart of the Great White North. Welcome to the Canadian Prepper Podcast. Immerse yourself in the world of preparedness with insights from seasoned experts and a touch of Canadian practicality. Your go-to source for all things survival, resilience, and self-reliance. Now, let's kick off another episode packed with knowledge and strategies to ensure you're ready for whatever life may throw your way. Stay tuned and let the journey to preparedness begin. Welcome to episode number 247 of the Canadian Prepper Podcast. We are recording September the 8th, 2024. My name is Eric, host of the show based in Southern Ontario, hunter, target shooter, ham radio operator, and computer geek. As a first responder, witnessed an over-reliance on emergency services during major events and started a small preparedness company to help people get better prepared for at least 72 hours, if not longer. And I'm Jeff. I am based in Central Ontario. I'm a target shooter, a ham radio operator, general overall handyman, and a weather nerd. And I'm Brad. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm Brad. I'm in Eastern Ontario, part-time amateur prepper, constantly trying to better myself. If you want to support the show, buy some swag. We have both the Canadian Prepper Podcast t-shirt and the Tactical Velcro patch at www.prepperpodcast.ca. All the proceeds help cover our podcast costs. And if you're enjoying the show, please take a few minutes and submit a review wherever you may have found us. We want your feedback, even if it's bad. We also invite you to reach out and tell us something that you learned this week. You can email us at feedback at prepperpodcast.ca. All right, so we're going to start out with some uh, relevant news articles. We'll update you on our personal preps since the last episode. We're going to get into the main topic. I'm not going to say the evil snow word. We're just going to get ready for fall. <laughs> I like that better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but winter winter is coming, just in case you were wondering. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Every year. <laughs> All right, so I'll start the uh, the news section off here. Uh, looks like a little bird uh, decided to cause a little bit of havoc out uh, Vancouver way and uh, caused a, a bit of a power outage. So, so little reminder that uh, little critters can cause some uh, some interesting things to happen. 70,000 70, people out. 8,000? Yep. 70,000. 70,000. 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was being a little That's sarcastic weird. when I said it was a little event. Yeah, uh, yeah no kidding. How <laughs> yeah, big was the bird? It doesn't say. <laughs> Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> that size, do that? No. It, it, <laughs> It all depends, you know, it, it's power outages caused by animals are, I wouldn't say they're common. They're, they're, they're not that common. Obviously they do happen. Um, there was one in Toronto, my, my brother, his place went down and it was a, it was a squirrel that decided to walk across the transformer. But by the time it got to the other side yeah. of the transformer, its tail was still touching the wire on the other side. Yep. So yeah, it, uh, yep. it did it out, but, um, well, yeah, it's, yeah, just, it's, uh, it's, it's not that uncommon, but just shows you the, the fragility of our, uh, our infrastructure. They want all this electric yep. stuff and a, a single bird, bird can, can take us down thousand people. Like, come on. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Well, That's sad. I saw a good all one. The reason. I saw a good say one. All the reason to have your a... generator and go ahead, Brad. Yeah. Yeah, there was a, um, not a stork, not a, it might have been a heron or a crane landed on top of a larger transformer and mm. then reached down and touched with its beak one of the wires and instantly, poof, gone. Mm -hmm. And all the lights went out. Yep. That'll happen. Oh, yeah. But all the more reason to have a generator and know how to use it. Yep. Exactly. Just for stuff like this. I have three. <laughs> now, let me guess. You've tested them all and you know how to use them. Yes. Wow. Look Excellent. at that. <laughs> I have. Well, I've got a couple of quick uh, items, more or less, uh, more supply chain issue stuff. And I mean, we just kind of really finished that whole rail fiasco of, Going on strike, not going on strike, go on strike. 
The government says, nope, we're not going to step in. Nope, no, nope, we're not going to step in. They go on strike, they're on strike for 18 hours. Okay, we'll step in now. Like, so okay. anyways, um, <laughs> Air Canada pilots are looking to, uh, to strike. I believe they are eligible to strike uh, anytime after the 18th of September. Uh, I know there's, there's a lot of back and forth and, you know, again, not, not getting into employee relations and all that stuff. The company is saying Air Canada saying they, they've offered them a very, very um, lucrative pay increase. And of course the union says it's not enough. You never know who to believe. Uh, But anyways, at the end of the day, we could be looking at uh, another uh, airline strike. Who knows whether the government steps in like they did with WestJet, whatever. Who knows? Um, but that's just something Time to be tell. aware of if you're Time. if you're looking at jumping onto a plane or you know mm-hmm. cargo carriers and that kind of stuff. They'll be grounded. So yeah, well, now that the rail is oper- operational, maybe they'll just send everything in that way. Yeah, it's hard to say. We'll find and out. It, is, it still sucks. Yep. Right. Anyway. Well, it's got Jeff. Uh, so uh, on that supply chain issue, the second one is um, the East Coast port workers. So all of the um, all the workers that um, unload the, the cargo containers and ships and all that stuff uh, on the East Coast, they had the labor disruption on the West Coast last year. Uh, this one is the East Coast. Um, they can strike as of the 1st of October. So um, I'm hearing reports that companies are already rerouting their ships and their cargo ships to the West. Of course, the problem there is they can't handle the uh, the extra load. So again, could be looking at, um, at some supply chain issues. You know, I hate to use the C word, but now... You know, stuff for Christmas is starting to come in, and it's coming in on the boats, and so you're not going to be able to get it. Starting to come in, half of it's already here. Well, yeah, 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 I I was kind of being generous, but yeah, you're right. Um, And I got to point out, we're we're just shy of seven minutes in, and we've already mentioned snow and Christmas, and it's September. (laughs) Yep. Damn it! Welcome to Canada. Have a nice day. Yep. Yeah, where you get all four seasons in one day. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, uh, you mentioned, Eric, just before we hit the button there, that uh, we shouldn't mention that S word that goes along mm-hmm. with what's going to come soon in the wintertime. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, the wife saw that this afternoon. Yeah, very, well. very briefly, only a few minutes, nothing really Nothing really touched the ground kind of thing and stayed. It was just kind of wet the ground a little bit, but yeah, it, it came down very briefly and people were kind of surprised. And I mean, what are you surprised about? It's, it's going to come regardless. Just get used to it. Yep, just get ready for it. Yep. Yeah. Well, last night, uh, I shouldn't say it, but just uh, in the North Bay area, some people near the North Bay airport said there was a, just, just a skiff accumulation that was coming on the vehicles. Nothing on the ground because the ground's still too warm. Yeah. But a vehicle or or something that cools with the temperature, it was uh, it was sticking there a little bit. Oh God! Well, like I said, it's coming. Can't do much yep. about it. Yep. Well, we're gonna take a second and just uh, shout out. We got uh, Rip in the live chat saying, "I really enjoy the show." So appreciate that. Thanks for uh, coming out and watching it live. Where are you I'm from, sorry. Rip? Yeah, we'll see what uh, comes back there. Yeah. All right. Nice to know so, how far we get. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But how about we uh, move into uh, what we've done lately for preps? We'll kick mm-hmm. off with Brad. I haven't been here for a little while. I've been pretty busy. Um, schedule has been, uh, 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 although the last two weeks have been nice. They've been kind of slow, but I finally got my shed wired with uh, actual electrical power. I had buried the line a couple months ago, got around to wiring everything. Uh, everything works very well. My shed is still standing and not a charred piece of crap. i uh, been doing work in my basement. Ba- make a, a bedroom for the older child here. Looking at... Uh, from Ontario via PI, he says. I've uh, been looking at uh, getting a window 
put in for that basement room. Going to go order that with uh, the older child tomorrow at uh, Home Depot. Uh, bit of gas rotation, just cleaning stuff up. Uh, we did a big push in the basement to get things cleaned up and uh, made a thrift store run to get rid of said stuff. Just chugging along, prepping for the inevitable white stuff that comes down and <laughs> living life. Jeff, what have you been up to? Excellent. Well, I uh, got out to the fish camp this last week with uh, Eric and a few buddies. And for an abbreviated holiday, I uh, I have no problem admitting that it was wet, it was rainy, it was cold, and it was like I have had enough of this. Not mm -hmm. saying I'm a fair weather guy, but I'd had enough. And we uh, cut it a little bit short and came home a day early. And uh, I think that was a good call when it was like only plus two at night and you're in a tent and it's raining and yeah, just, that's no fun. Uh, I've been working a lot the last couple of weeks on um, trying to clean up the firewood at my house. Every time I, uh, every time I get it cleaned up, my, uh, my arborist friend calls and says, I'm doing another job down the road. You want some wood? He, uh, <laughs> he got me last week. I got two trailer loads. Uh, dump trailer load. So, you know, a nine foot dump trailer load. Um, and he says, well, I'll, I got a couple, I'll drop some off with my company truck. Okay. No problem. Three company truck drops later. So now we're, now we've got, now I've got six loads of firewood sitting on my side lawn. So I've got quite a bit of work to do, uh, get them out of there before, uh, before it snows, hopefully. And, or at least, get get it enough that I can get in and out of my garage and not have an issue. So sounds like you need a case of beer and a friend to come over, Jeff. Well, you never know, do you? <laughs> you might want to bring your saw with you. Oh, hey. You might well, know I can run the saw and he can run the the, uh, the wood splitter. So yep. there you this go. Is true. Yep. We'll figure it all out. Oh yeah. Yeah for myself it's been uh pretty crazy with uh with work and work and more work ended up on the other side of the world for uh for a conference that was kind of cool and then uh got out to the fish camp there with uh with jeff and like you said it was cold <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know it, it helped just kind of show us that uh you know sometimes the weather is going to win and we uh we're going to kind of prepare a little bit better for different types of weather for the next time around so uh, the first time we've been uh I guess chilled out would be the best way to put it. Um, but now we know, you know, we'll pack a heater. We've got some plans for the future. Um, but it wasn't without testing some ham radio stuff because of course, oh, really? I, I have to do that when I'm camping. Like it's just a requirement. So uh, messed around with um, Winlink, which is email um, or a digital mode over ham radio. Uh, was able to make contact with Scott, one of our panelists here. Uh, I sent him a quick message and he was able to reply to me. Um, routed that email from, uh, was, was it Wisconsin? Yeah, Wisconsin. Yeah. And we were up in and around uh, North Bay area. So that was kind of cool. Um, so got that done. And then we were also able to, uh, to get in contact with a, uh, a ham operator back down uh, our way that we know from uh, the local club and just ask him for a weather report. And that was kind of the deciding factor for us that, uh, yeah, it's time now to, pack up and go and he was pretty much bang on with the information he gave us uh we started to pack up and right about the time he said the downpour was coming it hit us so uh yeah. it was good to get that info because we get most of the stuff packed up before that downpour came our way so yeah that was uh you know useful to get because where we were there's no cell reception there's no nothing um you're not getting your internet you're not getting your weather reports you're not getting any of that but we do have access to the local repeater um, which is interconnected with a whole bunch of repeaters that would get us pretty much right down to downtown Toronto. So it was kind of neat that way to be able to get some information relayed, get a report and make a decision with it. So at least I know my setup works, but we, uh, yeah, we got to plan out a little bit more learning opportunity. Bring oh, some that heat new, next time. That new setup with the antennas worked well though. Sure did. Yeah, that was fantastic. So yeah, you uh, set up. picture you put up on the, the chat. Yeah, yeah, I'll put the I'll put some pictures of the setup in uh, the Discord as well. So if anybody's interested in seeing it, I'll uh, I'll toss the pictures up there and you can have a look. So 
but yeah, it worked out uh, very, very well. We were able to to hear a bunch of stations in like Italy and France and Portugal as well. Uh, well, we were all sitting in our trucks trying to warm up because it was cold. Um, <laughs> I just ran the coax into the truck and ran the, ran the radio in the truck. And we made a few contacts <laughs> while we were sitting there warming up. So, but um, it was good to see that that setup works and uh, the digital side of it works as well. So we can uh, make, uh, make contacts uh, via email and uh, via voice still. So that yeah, was cool. Nice. Speaking of Scott, yeah. how's he doing? Good. Yeah, he's, uh, he's good. He's busy, busy, busy with the little ones, but uh Sounds like he's doing all right. So hopefully we'll see him back again on the panel as soon as yeah. uh, things kind of settle down. But it's been, he's been busy with the if new. We decide to do a, a, a gasifier times two episode. He'll show up. I sure. think that's I think that's how we'll get him. Yeah, we'll, we have to do a gasifier times two. Yeah, then we'll get him back for sure. Um, Ian, uh, for those of you that were worried, uh, he has done CGN deals recently. I know we haven't heard from him in a little while. He was going to be here tonight, but he had to uh, take off for a little uh, little emergency. He's got on the go, so. Uh, he does have in the notes here that he did do a CGN deal. So everyone can calm down. He's <laughs> clearly kind of coming back to normal, whatever normal is for Ian. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he did a CGN deal. So yep. all is right in the world here for a little while anyways. <laughs> all right. So with that, let's uh, let's move into the main topic, shall we? And like I said, uh, we're not going to say the evil S word here because we're not talking about... Uh, about uh, winter time and, and snow quite yet. Oh, I said it, but hey. Yeah. Uh, but we're getting darn close. And uh, with that uh, that whole fishing trip thing going on where we had the cold snap, uh, it was a good reminder that uh, fall is here and it's time to kind of start looking at uh, your preps and kind of switching them around. We always like to do uh, seasonal episodes just to get everybody's mindset into uh, the next season that's coming. Make sure that you're getting all your stuff uh, switched over to the new season and that uh, all your preps are ready to rock and roll for uh, what is coming up next. And it's always a good reminder to give you a little kick to uh, start reorganizing and getting ready because pretty soon you're trading in your umbrellas for shovels. So, Old man winter is making his way here. Sure is. I prefer the other side of this uh, when we're doing the uh, the prep shows for the summertime and getting rid of all your winter stuff. Yeah, but, hey, you know, <laughs> we'll we'll be there soon enough. Yes, Denny. Denny d- yeah. definitely has a good comment there in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> Snow, Mother Nature's dandruff. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're not wrong, Denny. You're not wrong. Oh. oh. So, so I got a good long list here of things. Uh, Ian did put a couple of things in as well. Uh, I know uh, Brad and Jeff also have a couple of notes here. Um, you know, we'll just do it the usual way. We'll just open the floor. It'll be just an open conversation. We don't have to go through things uh, one by one or just have one of us chat at a time. Um, so feel free to jump in whenever. We'll just take the conversation that way. And the live chat as well, if, uh, if you've got anything you want to throw in or something we're missing or something you want to comment on, feel free. We'll get your comment up on the screen here and we'll read it out for everybody else. So... It doesn't just have to be the three of us on the panel. Everybody, uh, all 12 of you sitting in the live chat right now are welcome to jump in as well. There you go. So, It'd be interesting to see what, uh, even though we've put a bunch of stuff in there, and I know I haven't even looked at everybody's, just had a good glance at it, but I can tell everybody's got probably 10 to 15 things that are all the same. Yep. But it'd be, inter- it'd be interesting to see from the panel as well, like, sorry, from the live chat, what else we might do. Somebody's, mm-hmm. you know, Hey, maybe I missed that. Yeah. Yeah, Or those of you that are listening uh, after the fact, after the live show, toss it into a feedback at prepperpodcast.ca and we'll get it into the next episode as kind of a follow-up to this one. And then that way uh, you can be involved in the conversation as well. But uh, let's kick off with uh, gear and clothing prep because uh, we're going from, you know, warmer weather to colder. So you're going to start looking at... uh, you know, unfortunately getting rid of those flip-flops. And I know there's some of you that are hardcore flip-flop, like diehard fans they are going to wear them all winter. Don't yell oh. at me. Most are going to switch it out. And, uh, you know, you're flipping flipping the uh, flip-flops out for shoes and boots and, and all that good stuff. You're Crocs getting into layering sandals. again. Yeah. No, socks and sandals. Sure. If you want to be that no, guy, Brad. No. Yeah. Crocs and sandals. <laughs> oh, cro- where's the kick button? Yeah, right. no sorry, kidding. Crocs and, yeah, Crocs yeah. and socks. <laughs> I have seen that. Seriously, I've seen that in the middle of January where a, uh, yeah. a long haul trucker got out of his truck in Crocs and socks and went, kicked you know his what? doors open. 
backed into the dock and then sat in his truck the entire time. Receiver came out and banged on the door, signed the paperwork, and the guy left. I'm sure. I'm sure they were safety Crocs. Oh, absolutely. They were nice, yeah. bright yeah. pink. Yeah. Oh, well, good. one of the uh, it's funny you you mentioned that. I I wasn't going to pick on um, on Muffin, but I will. Um, <laughs> he's one of the guys that uh, goes to the fish camp. That's his nickname. And yes, that's his nickname. Um, yep. We are all freezing, and he's wandering around in shorts and sandals with no socks, and it's like yep. plus four. And it's wet and it's muddy and it's like, dude, I will take and, my hat for you. Yeah. And an important key thing to this, also sober at the time. Oh, yes. Well, that's oh, he was this morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shortly thereafter, probably not, but at the time, nope. yep. <laughs> but, so that, no, that moves into the importance of, as we discussed, footwear. So. Yep. Um, time of year, waterproof and insulated boots, um, especially waterproof. I mean, the last thing you want is your feet being wet when it's really, really cold. If, you know, nothing wrong with getting a soaker in the middle of July, but you don't want it in the middle of December. So, um, you know, have some, some waterproof boots. Again, if you, if you're going to do that, yep, change the socks, dry socks. Yep. Um, so <laughs> Snowfall uh, in yeah. December yep. here. Yes. Yep. Um, yeah, that's a good it's one. True. It's always muffin time. It is always muffin time. <laughs> oh. but, uh, um, it, yeah, yeah. Keep yeah. Going. No, no, I was just going to say, um, and keeping with the weather we had, rain gear, windbreakers, um, gloves. Umbrella. Yeah. Yep. Those little uh, dollar store ponchos and dollar store um, um, anything, anything to keep you dry. Those unexpected yep. cold snaps or that cold rain, you're you're gonna wish you had something. Yep. And don't forget to swap the stuff out in your car that you might be carrying around now. If you have that extra set of flip flops or extra set of shoes or something like that that uh, that wheels around with you, flip those out for the new the boots and. Um, you know, the snow pants and, and that kind of stuff. Cause it's time to, to look at the vehicle as well and, and flip around your clothing and gear that you might take there, but also your day-to-day gear that, uh, that you use every single day. I took my car, my, my truck bag. That's the rush 24. I took that mm-hmm. out two weeks ago and I've started to slowly go through that knowing that I'm yeah. not going far for work or for, for pleasure. Yep in the next little while so okay start to slowly go through that and change some of the snacks out get rid of them put a fresh bottle of water in there put some extra socks change of clothes that kind of thing do all of that and put it back in the truck probably by the end of next week when we know that yeah okay the weather's going to really start to dip now just to be prepped for it that i've got it all don't have to worry about it ahead of the curve so yeah uh, next to the list. Oh, go ahead, Brad. That and, uh, and um, prepping the, the the snacks and water and whatnot uh, is also at your work. Do the same thing. Bring a bring a little bag into work with some extra snacks. Put it in your desk. Mm-hmm. Bottle of water or two. Never know when you might get stuck there overnight. Change of clothes, especially with that uh, that. Old man winter bearing down on us pretty quick. Oh, we got a good uh, a good point in uh, the live chat here yeah. from uh, Hunting Upland. We'll talk about uh, EDC or everyday carry and gear. There's no mention of dry bags. Fantastic point. Get a bag that's going to keep your stuff dry. Waterproof bag, right? Perfect. Valid point. I'll be yep. that. For yes. sure. What we missed? Open. Good. Good catch. Yep. yep. No, and it, it, all it takes yep. is a little bit of snow on, like even the bag that Brad was talking about there, the Rush Twenty Four, gets gets snow on it. You toss it in the car or back in the house. The snow melts. It gets damp. It gets wet. Everything in the bag is now yeah damp and wet, which then makes you miserable, more so miserable than usual, right? So yes. especially it's, uh, with the fact that you you have that bag with all your extra stuff in it that you're hoping mm-hmm. is dry, yep. And now you open it and it's moldy, musty, and wet. Well, now what? Fantastic point. 
So absolutely. Uh, uh, home preparation. So, you know, you got your clothing all figured out. You got kind of your gear flipped over. Um, some of the gear is going to be the same all year round. Some of it's going to be different, right? Uh, but getting your house ready to go as well, or your apartment or wherever it is you're living, um, it's an important thing too, because there's lots to get done before the uh, the snow flies and uh, we're getting into like the stupid minus weather then versus what we've got right now. Uh, but just like some basics, the ceiling windows, doors, um, making sure your pipes are properly insulated, that kind of stuff, preventing drafts, uh, just getting, getting energy um, energy loss kind of covered because that's you know something you could do for, for summer preps too and getting into the warmer weather. If you're running air conditioning, you don't want drafts as well, right? Um, but in the winter time, it's uh, it can be a little bit more detrimental because uh, you're getting into some pretty cold weather depending on where you live. So just making sure that uh, everything's kind of looked after and uh, is in good order, right? This this is just basic home maintenance. This isn't anything crazy. Uh, just making sure things are sealed up, ready to go because uh, you don't want a draft in the uh, in the dead of winter, kind of freezing you out. So all of those things you just said is all about the inside of the home. Mm-hmm. Without the outside of the home, get up on your roof. If yep. you've got shingles, check for loose shingles. See if you can replace them before the snow and ice gets underneath them and starts damaging. Or the winds. We all know the winds. Yep. Jeff's the weather guy here. We all know the winds are going to kick up. Yep. I'll right? just so, say safe, safely get up on your roof. Yes, Make safely. sure you're tying off Absolutely. all that kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Bring your, Take your time. handbook with you. Or hire someone that, uh, that knows what they're doing if you're not comfortable getting up on the roof. But yeah. Check and it then, out, or even just visually check it from the ground. And then, you know, get up on a ladder, clean your gutters mm-hmm. of all the summer crap that's gotten into them because we know yep. more leaves and dirt and everything is going to get into them. Yep. So make it clean for all that rain that we know is coming. We know Ian does it at his place. He has a fire break all the, right, all the way around his property, which is great. Yep. But right now the leaves are still on the trees. So have a good look in the in the undergrowth, like right underneath the tree, and look up and see what branches are mm-hmm. dead right now. Take care of them now. Yep. The snow load on them will make them crack come down on top of your roof. Great point. Yep. Um, if you don't have, if you can afford it, go and get another pack of shingles and some roofing screws, some shingle screws or shingle nails, and mm-hmm. and or a, a good size good thickness, good quality tarp, and, and 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 again, some nails. If you do get a hole in your roof, you can at least patch it till you mm-hmm. can get it fixed. Or it's in the night, tree comes down again, you can at least patch it, seal it up kind of thing. On the outside. Suggesting home, being prepared for something? Uh, oh. Mm-hmm. Sure. Interesting podcast, the choice to do that on. Yeah. <laughs> And and uh, I know Jeff would definitely agree with me on this one. With the uh, with the next one, well, the third one down there, the the firewood of uh, cleaning your chimney. Yep. Yeah, I was going to touch on that when we touch the next spot, uh, spot on the heating system. So okay. yep. yep. Still, take yep. it away. Yep. Which we'll is check it, check and maintain your heaters. Whatever yep. whatever you use, whether it's a uh, uh, an oil furnace, uh, a gas furnace, um, whatever. Um, I would suggest having an expert come in and have a look at it. Um, you never know what may have happened to it over, over the, the summer. Um, I know my, my parents many years ago, they had a, a gas furnace and the first time it got cool and they turned the, uh, the gas furnace on, it didn't take very long and the carbon monoxide detector went off because there was a split in their firebox that occurred over the summer. So... Mm-hmm. They're not sure exactly what happened, but they figured as soon as they lit it and they put heat on it, it cracked. And so, um, you know, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say 20 minutes or 28 minutes in, we've mentioned carbon monoxide somewhere. Alan is smiling. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Yep. Wood stoves. um, Brad said it. If you've, if you've got a wood stove, make sure that your, make sure your chimney is clear. Nothing, uh, nothing causes more problems than the critters building a nest in your stovepipe over the middle, yep. over the course of the summer. You don't yep. know it's there. You, yep. you haven't They're checked They're quiet it. about it. They don't yeah, cause, yeah. they don't draw attention to you, it. You, you know? light your fire and all of a sudden, a, either A, your house is full of smoke because your chimney's totally blocked or 
they've built it. Usually they build them out of sticks and leaves yep. and stuff like that. Uh, that if there gets enough heat up that chimney could potentially catch that on fire. And then you're going to have a fire in a place you don't want it. And if you haven't cleaned it and it's got creosote in there, now you're into a chimney fire and you're into a whole bunch more problems. So um, yeah. Yep. Make sure that uh, make sure that you get up there and you, you get that, that chimney cleaned before you light your first fire of the season. Um, and obviously you know, talking about heating systems, make sure that you have some sort of a backup power or heating source. Uh, we're getting into winter. If you're, you know, even though you may have a gas furnace, the blower that gets that hot air from the basement where your furnace is to the second floor where your bedroom is, is not going to operate unless you have a generator or, a, you know, a whole home generator or some kind of a standby generator uh, or some way to make it work. So, you know, a lot of those um, furnaces, um, water, he- gas, water, water heaters, those kind of things, yeah. they have a safety on them. Power goes out, they shut off. They won't come on yep. for yep. the burner won't light carbon monoxide reasons. So, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> um, and the last one I'll, I'll, I'll touch on this. It says stockpiling firewood, preparing your firewood or alternate heating fuels. I will say this. If you haven't prepared your firewood by now, you're done. Um, it's not, unless what you find has been standing dead for a couple of years, chances are it's not going to be dry enough to burn this year. It will burn. You'll hear it sizzle. The problem with that is you're putting creosote in your chimney and that's, that's where you get your, your chimney fires and stuff like that is from burning unseasoned wood. Mm -hmm. Um, most dead wood. Like the ash I, I got, it's dead. I would never burn it this year. I'll give it at least six months to season. Next year, it'll be great. But um, yeah, unless unless that's the last thing you have and your life's on the line, you should not be burning uh, unseasoned firewood. You're just asking for trouble. Yep. yep. Good to know. Um, even though I, I agree with you, Jeff, if you, if you haven't got your firewood by now, you're kind of screwed. Um, one thing to keep in mind, uh, for somebody who is in a pinch and, and doesn't have firewood or is looking for it, should the power go out and they don't have enough wood to keep going with pallets, hmm. lumber, yep. Yep. hit up, hit up a, uh, um, a construction site, get permission to go dumpster diving. If they'll allow you take lumber, cut it up. A handsaw still gets you good exercise and still makes good firewood for you. Still, well, still point. cuts it to a good length to be thrown into a fire. Mm-hmm. Yep. Obviously, you need, you need to be careful of uh, not using pressure-treated wood, but yes. um, right. again, if you're in that pinch... Yep, you got to use what not, you got to use. It's not great, but... It'll still keep you warm. Better than nothing. Yep. Yep. Yep, yep. absolutely. Absolutely. And where would we be if we didn't start talking about food? Because Ooh, that's definitely a thing. We'd be starving. We'd be starving as weird. We'd be, that's right. Uh, so getting your garden cleaned up, you know, we've done a couple episodes now in the, in the past. If you want to go through the library and check them out on gardening and such, uh, but just doing that cleanup, making sure that uh, everything is ready to, you know, zipped up and ready to go to bed. So it's ready for uh, the spring and for you to plant again and getting everything kind of canned and, uh, and ready to go in the, uh, in the shelves because, once winter's here, there's nothing better than having a, a pantry full of uh, fresh, freshly canned vegetables and such ready to, to rock and roll on a cold night, right? Yep. Go yep. back for a second there. Your your garden cleanup. Definitely yep. a, a, a clearing out all the dead plants and whatnot. And till it. Till yep. it. And, and then add more leaves, add more leaf litter, add more lawn litter, whatnot, and till it again and put all that nutrients back into the ground to decompose over the winter till the spring maybe and and i think and then you should be you should have some nice good soil to be planting with brad you're going you're you're just going to go down that whole big rabbit hole of Uh, telling no tell you know you're going to get yelled at from somebody i don't care about that do what you want to do but it's something that people i know i'm just giving you a hard time i can hear melissa yelling right now something about buffalo buffalo bait buffalo uh buffalo maple oh man i can't talk yeah buffalo bait yeah and uh and tilling the garden just don't till the garden (laughs) (laughs) 
But see, I, I have it but, on, yeah. on good authority from somebody else that Melissa actually knows as well, especially for, for me here that my garden is, is probably six feet tall of weeds right now and let it die out, mm -hmm. till it, put a cover over it, let it sit for the winter, fluff it, not really till it in the spring, but fluff it up, plant your seeds. You should be good to go. Yep. Are okay. you suggesting that different things work for different people? Yes, different strokes. Wow. For different wow, look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know this through experience and testing things. Well, times are good. Yes. Look at that. And I, I, I definitely agree with you, though, that uh, once, you've, once you've harvested everything to uh, do your seed storage, collect the seeds, mm. do what you have to to dry them out. Yep. Do what works for you. Follow it and good luck with your seeds in the spring. Yep. Yep. And and right now is a good time to go and buy seeds. So, a lot uh, of them be on sale. People be clearing them out from different stores, different places. So good point. Get them, seal them up, keep them for next year, throw them back in the ground. Everybody's rushing for seeds and you've already got yours in the ground. So why not? Well, fantastic point. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, Kind of touched on vehicles at the beginning there with clothing and, and swapping out your uh, your go bag or get home bag or whatever you want to call it bag that you carry around in the car. Um, but even just seasonal maintenance, right? Getting uh, getting your car in for the oil change, getting it in to get the uh, like the antifreeze Undercoat. checked out, undercoating. If if uh, you really want to start fights tonight, eh, Brad? Uh, mm. <laughs> you know. <laughs> If you want to get your undercoating done, if that's your thing, because some people say it's not worth it at all. Some people swear by it. It's, uh, you know, whatever works I've never for you. done them on my vehicles. I've had one vehicle that ha had it done for years, yep. and we had it for two winters, and there was nothing wrong with it. But all of my other vehicles, I've never undercoated. There's never a problem with them. But like I said, it's to each their own. It's just one of those things. Mm -hmm. If you believe in doing it, then, hey, maybe it's hey, so you know, it. now is the time yep. to do it. Yep. If you feel good about it, you go for it. I get mine sprayed. It's you go. You know, totally up to you. It's, um, you know, swapping out your winter tires, uh, your all-season tires, checking your fluids, doing all just that basic stuff. It's not not have to be anything hardcore. Um, making sure your washer fluid's all topped off. Just taking the time to, to be comfortable that you are ready to go because, uh, the driving season is changing and things are going to be different. And uh, we always try to say that we forget how to drive in winter the first couple of weeks because a lot of people do. Yep. And one, one for me at least, important thing we, we didn't touch on there in your seasonal maintenance is your yep. battery. Um, if your battery seems a little bit mm. weak, if it's more than five or six years old, I would change it. Last thing you oh. want to do is get caught in that minus 30 because we all know uh, cold degrades batteries significantly. Mm -hmm. um, Great point. And, you know, you leave work at, at 11 o'clock at night in the middle of a snow-filled parking lot and your car won't start. So booster packs. Yeah. 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 Yep. Those little no-cos are, oh, are small enough that it can Worth sit in my lunchbox. Yep. I can have that in my lunchbox. It comes in and out of the truck, well, the trucks, and into the house and whatnot. It'll always stay warm. It's an easy thing to check once a week to see if the battery is yep. still full on it. And then you, while you're driving, you can be charging it as you're going to yep. work to make sure that it's charged. Yep. So you're not going to be they are in a pinch. worth their weight in gold. Oh, yeah. Yep. So much easier than having to find another still, vehicle, drag out the booster cables. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, but there's still a there's still a pain to do it when it's minus thirty. If you know oh, your yep. battery's bad, just just, just bite the bullet. Look after it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah look absolutely. After it now. Totally yeah, agree with that. Yep. I I I have a brand new battery in my truck, and my big truck, my work truck, has three of them. Um, I'm not worried about that. But yes, Jeff, you are still absolutely right that yep. I've even used my big truck to to boost small vehicles on the side of the road because they were they were stranded. Now I'm going to stop. Yeah, it's going to be a pain in the ass, but now I know that that person is going to get off the road and get home. Right. Yep. yep. Yeah. And so. of course, updating your emergency kit as well. We kind of touched on the clothing thing, uh, but you know, get the ice scrapers and the snow brushes out because we're going to need them soon. So time to get them in there now. Um, looking into your, your emergency food, figuring out, uh, figuring out what, uh, what you want to carry for uh, hydration. 
and figuring out how you're going to get that in and out of the vehicle because it's time to remind yourself that uh, if you got a bunch of water or, or Powerade or whatever you tend to carry in the, the warmer months, it's going to freeze soon. So yep. getting your mindset back into that and just figuring out what you're going to do. Um, but yeah, it's uh, just little little things like that. Just reassessing and making sure all's good with uh, with your kit. Yeah. Um, hand warmers. Oh yes! Again, hot talking hands. about worth weight and gold. Hot hands mm-hmm. and hot toes. Sure. Sure. Whatever they're called. <laughs> sure. Yep. Um, I've even seen some uh, um, abdomen ones. Yep. That you can place underneath your sweater, around your mm-hmm. around your lungs, your heart, stomach, whatnot, and on on your back, your yep. spine. That, oh, even uh, the little ones that say they're for hands. You can put them wherever you want. Oh, yeah. I'll, absolutely. I'll leave that they're... up to your imagination. But, um, <laughs> you know. I have a, uh, because I'm outside a lot in the wintertime, mm-hmm. especially on a forklift, and I'm up higher in the in the wind and the all the rest of it, that uh, I have a insulated heated jacket. Yep. That uh, it never leaves the truck once the, once the temperature goes down below minus 10. It, it's in the truck constantly, and I have uh, two battery packs that stay constantly in my lunchbox just for that purpose that I can last for 8, 10 hours out in minus 20, 25 weather Beautiful. and and not be cold. I might be, I may be chilly, but I'm not going to freeze. I'm not going to be yep. chattering and really horrible. I'm going to be comfortable inside that and Perfect. do my job. Very nice. So... Uh, again, first aid kits, it's always good to go over those yes. um, as the seasons change. Just as a reminder, as the seasons change, you're already checking things, you're already rotating things, check out your first aid kits, whether it's one you carry in the, your vehicle all the time, it's one that you keep at home all the time, it's one that's in your get home, uh, bug out, whatever bag you want to call it. S- just check the contents, make sure that everything that you think is in there is in there and replenish anything that you may have used over the last little while. So I always like to use the seasonal changes to do that. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, uh, the extra blankets in there, the hand warmers, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Yep. yep. Yeah. Put um, them in there, keep them in there. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Doesn't take uh, up that uh, much room. Nope. <clears throat> Of course, uh, with the seasons changing, the uh, the colds are going to start spinning around again. Oh, so yes. kind of stocking up on some cold and flu medication. Well, uh, well, you can is always a good idea. You probably have already some since you're, everyone listening to this is in some kind of preparedness mindset. But again, looking at your first aid kits and looking at your cold flu medications, make sure you got stuff on hand. Can't hurt. Dare I say a mask? Yes, you dare say it. If it's your thing, it's your thing. Sure. Yep. Why not? Uh, yeah. And another big thing with the winter, uh, the winter months is it's you know you're going to get into cold and cruddy weather where you're not going out, you're not uh, uh, doing all the fun stuff you do throughout the winter. So just uh, and the days are shorter, right? It's colder weather. Uh, it's going to have an impact even on your mental health. So just getting ready for that, right? It hits everybody every year. You know, it's the days get shorter. It's darker at like, you know, quarter to five, five o'clock. It's dark. It's cold. It's miserable. Um, So just getting yourself in that mindset now. I know we've talked a lot about mindset here, um, especially since we had uh, Don Mann on. It's kind of, you know, we've talked about in the past before, but really with with him coming on, it's uh, it's important. You know, uh, get yourself ready for uh, for the winter months. is is along along that note. Go to uh, if you if you can, if you're wanting to, go to the the thrift shops and pick up some board games. Right. Pick up. I have. I, I love to read. I, I I used to read all the time. I could finish a 500 page book in a day without an issue. Um, I have. I want to say 10 good sized novels, five six hundred pages that have been given to me as gifts over the last say 10 mm-hmm. years, I have yet to crack their spines only for the reason of if the power goes out, I have something that will keep my mind off of the real world, so to mm-hmm. speak, for a little mm-hmm. while. You know, like 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 Jeff has said, you'll be, start the fire. You're sitting by the fire doing nothing. All you got to do is sit there and keep the fire going to keep everybody in the house warm. Read a book. 
Yeah. Why not? Get some get some card games, get some board games. <laughs> even even a simple game of checkers, tic-tac-toe with your kids passes yep. the time away. You get a little bonding time, little family time mm-hmm. in there too, and you forget about what's really going on around you. Your mental health got better. You stayed on track. You kept going, you survived. Mm-hmm. It's true. Yep. Very good points. Yeah. Um, and of course, with uh, with the winter season coming, you know, we're always ready for this, but uh, but having some source of uh, backup power, right? It's, you know, power outages happen all year round, no matter what the season is. Like we had that news article at the beginning of this with the bird taking out power for a little bit there, right? But they do happen a little bit more frequently in the wintertime, uh, especially with the heavier snows and some of the nastier storms that we get come through. Um, so having uh, having stuff ready to go, making sure your backup generators, this is the perfect time of year now. Um, it's still fairly warm out, not stupid warm. You can get outside, fire up your generators, load test them, make sure that they're working the way that uh, they should be. Make sure you know how to start them, figuring out where you want to put them, how are you going to run power cables into the house if you need to, uh, and just making sure everything works. Best time of year to do it. because It's perfect weather for it, right? Another Another aspect to that too of taking them out and doing your maintenance on them and everything if you are the one that does all of those that maintenance and you are normally the one who hooks up the generator to the house bring the husband the wife the kids out Hmm. hey this is where it is this is where it's stored this is the fuel we put into it this is how you check the fuel bring it outside this is how we start it this is how we hook it to the house perfect Yep. Here's the big chain to chain, chain it to the truck so nobody steals yep. it in the middle of an ice storm. Like happened Here, Here's where the gas ago. goes. Here's where the gas cans are. Yes. Right? Refresh everybody in the household. Yep. Even if they can't yeah. start the generator or pull it out or even fill it, they know where it is. Yep. Exactly. Somebody oh. is staying over at your place for the night or, or house sitting or babysitting. Yeah. Power goes out. What do you do? Yep. Here well, it is. The little five year old knows where the gas can is for the babysitter who's 17 yep. years old. Hey, this is how we do this and that and this. No issues. Your five year old saved your butt. Yep. Exactly. And where would we be without talking about communication systems? <laughs> Board sitting at a screen yep. with nothing on yep. it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, y'all, you want to make sure that you're, you've are you got some form of communication system. Dare I say ham radio. But, you know, you. I know, right? But, you know, making sure that those are all ready to go in a, in a power outage there, again, worth their weight in gold. Um, even if it's just like a local little FRS walkie-talkie, some kind of communication. Make sure that it works. Everybody knows how to use it. Same kind of thing we mentioned with the generators run them through usage, run them through, you know, if, uh, if this happens, we're going to use this, we're going to do this. Uh, just and make it fun. It doesn't have to be a tedious, oh my God, the world's ending. Let's go we'll test all these things now. That'll make it fun, right? Yeah. It's uh, just day-to-day things. Why not? And, and then, of course, you can uh, check out um, security and such as well around your place. It's a good time to review it and make sure all is good. Uh, Mm -hmm. All your security cameras are operating, any kind of security mechanisms you have in place, gates, doors, locks, just again, regular seasonal maintenance, right? Just make sure everything's good. Perfect time to go and grease out all those, all those things up for the winter. Yep. Like you said, make sure everything works and, and, and look around like you were saying cameras and, and lights and whatnot, make sure there's no uh, trees and branches in the way. Nothing's going to fall down on them. Again, this is the perfect weather right now. They get out and cut those branches down and do some outside yeah. maintenance. Not too hot, not too cold. It's just right. Yep. Except this past weekend when it was stupid freezing. <laughs> 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 but hey, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, anyone have any other? Uh, yeah, I got, a, I, got a, or? I got a couple of quick things I should have mentioned that were in my list, but I missed them. Um, Around the, around uh, your vehicle. um, Always make sure you, you, your fuel tank is as full as it can be. Don't, don't let your, yourself get down to a quarter, an eighth of a tank. Um, Half, half is empty, especially in the winter time. 
Absolutely. I mean, lot, lots of things. You get condensation there. Condensation, mm -hmm. water, water freezes. Gas lines mm -hmm. freeze. You're not going anywhere. You're yep. you're you're out traveling and you run into that dreaded road closure because of the weather. You may have to sit and let your vehicle idle for hours. You're not you're not going to have that. So make sure that, um, as Eric said, th don't let it get under half a tank. There's the really I was going to say there isn't a reason to let it go down. I understand the whole economics and everything. And and I'm not I'm not saying it that way, but, you know, do what you can to make sure that you've got enough fuel in your vehicle that you're not you're not going to get yourself into that pinch. Uh, same thing would apply if you're, uh, say, you're, you know, in my case, my my backup generator is a um, is propane. So I always make sure my propane, my I make sure my propane tanks are all full. Also, they run my barbecue, um, and and stuff like that. So, your Dalt, if you're listening, you full propane tanks. Um, <laughs> long story. We'll we'll fill you in, Brad. Um, so, yeah. What else did I have here? Um, oh, unfortunately, it is that time of year where. We're not talking about the S word, but we will be shortly. Um, so service your snowblower before uh, yes. before you need it, and it won't work. Yes. Um, so your 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 summer gear, like your lawnmowers, your weed eaters, if they're gas powered, those kind of things. Um, do your do your winter service on them. Get your gas line mm -hmm. antifreeze into them. Get your stabilizer. your fuel stabilizer into them. Do oil changes if that's what you do. Um, that kind of stuff. Um, and then get your winter stuff out, especially s specifically your snowblower. Um, check it over, check the belts. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't check the belts yep. and then you're going to, you're going to break a belt. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, make sure it, it obviously it runs properly and it's going to start and all check that stuff. Your, so. uh, shear bolts. Yeah. Pardon? Mm -hmm. Your shear yep. bolts. Yep. yep. On the front auger and the shoot auger, check your shear bolts. Yep. Now is a good time to go and buy some extra ones. That too. Instead mm -hmm. of searching great time around to check for them. half an hour with a magnet in the snow like I did last year. Yep. <laughs> I, I thought it. that was Pierre, but that was you that uh, had to fix no, I, it. I did the... it too. I did it too. Okay. I had a new snowblower and I didn't remember where I put the extra shear bolts. And I was out there with a strong magnet looking for one of the clips. Like the bolt was definitely gone, but I still, I had another bolt. I just didn't have a clip to hold it in with. Mm -hmm. And I was right. looking around for the clip with a strong magnet in the snow for about 20 minutes with a flashlight. I found it. And then the next right. day I promptly went back to home hardware and bought a 10 pack of shear bolts and clips. Yep. Just crank that up to, uh, you know, working on a skill 20 yep. minutes. Yep. 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 That's about the extra stuff that, uh, that I had that I could think of. I'm awesome. I'm going through my list and and everybody else's lists here in the notes as well and thinking yeah like we've touched on a lot of stuff and a lot of it is common sense but maybe somebody listening or watching didn't think of something that we mentioned and hey yeah. good if we helped you out awesome thanks for coming yeah. out yeah. yeah that's the whole the whole point of doing these seasonal swap out uh, episodes is to get everybody's mind kind of thinking towards okay it's time to swap out for winter season or fall season or summer season or spring or whatever's coming our way just to, to kind of plant that seed and get yeah. you thinking because a lot of the time it turns into uh oh it's here and yeah. i didn't do a b and c already so yeah and that, that was another thing that I, I i meant to touch on and i forgot um folks don't wait till it snows to put your winter tires on um <laughs> any any time the temperature is under or averages under about six to seven degrees celsius yep. You should be putting your winter tires on because everybody else waits till it snows and you're going to wait, especially if you don't do it yourself, you get it done somewhere else. You may be two or three days before they can get you in and get yep. your tires changed. Um, and that's yeah, ahead of the rush. You know, yep. you know what? Get, get, get them done ahead of time. It's not going to hurt. You know, a couple of weeks, one in a couple of weeks on your winter tires, even if it warms up a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Not going to nope. kill the tires. Nope. Mm -hmm. I ran a full 18 months on winter tires. 
<laughs> just I didn't Understood. I didn't have the, the the time and the money to be able yep. to go and get summer tires. I ran a full 18 months on winter tires. Oh. And during the summer, yeah, it's louder. You don't have exactly the best steering, but who cares? Yep. I don't care. I had tires on the ground. And then the yep. next winter came and I still had those same tires on and nothing happened. I just went through the winter. Following Look spring, that. took them off and yeah. changed them for they, they season, will they will winter specific winter tires will wear a little bit faster because oh, yeah. the 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 rubber's a bit a bit softer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that gives you the grip in the winter and they and they don't get as as hard. So in the in the heat and in the summer, they will wear more, but not saying you can't do it, not saying whatever, just just don't do the mm-hmm. opposite. Run with all season tires for 18 months. That's not really going to work too well. No. They're not, not, not in Ontario, they, anyways. They can say what they want about all season tires. I know people that run them all year round. I don't. They're not all season, they're three season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. And actually, I, I don't know if anybody else on the panel does it, but my um I get a discount on my auto insurance if I put specific yep. winter tires on. Yeah, most uh, insurers yeah. will uh, will toss yeah, a, a discount in. Do you put do you do you yep. put winter like the ones with the snowflake symbol on yep. them? Yep. Do you do you run them in the winter? And then, yes, I do. Okay, well, there's a five percent discount. Yep. But don't get in an accident and caught without them when you told them you had them. So. Yep. Don't lie. Hmm. I, mean, I didn't no. know they gave a discount. Yep. Most insurers will. Yep. Not all, but most. Something I'll have to look into. Look at mm. that. Saving you a couple of bucks for the uh, deal of the week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, uh, let's move into the podcast challenge, shall we? So podcast challenge for this episode is do three things to prep your house or yourself for the inclement weather that is soon approaching. And, uh, you know, tell us what you did. Kick an email into a uh, feedback at uh, prepperpodcast.ca. Yeah. Interesting right. to see how everybody else works. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, upcoming events. We've got the annual Preppers Meet uh, dates already for 2025. It's going to be July the 10th to the 13th. Uh, location still to be announced, but uh, we're really hoping that it's uh, at yeah. the same location as last year. because I saw that, that earlier in the, in the notes and was kind of, huh? I thought this was a yeah. done deal. I don't know if we can officially say it's back at the same location yet. Ah, okay. There's a very good chance that it will be, but we'll see. So. Oh, yeah. I have no idea Jeff, what Pat was. No. I think that's <laughs> yeah. Ian's. Uh, I think Ian was, we was probably asking about that. So, yeah. Don't know. Didn't go. Probably so should have. For but... my, my weather blurb, um, so I will fall on the sword and kind of say that this year's uh, hurricane forecast is slowly becoming a bust from the forecast point of view. Um, why? I have no idea. All of the parameters for the storms were there. Um, got record uh, temperatures, sea surface temperatures on the waters. Yeah, we're into i think it's the el nino or no la nina and anyways all of that stuff was there it just the Good storms night. just had a really difficult time getting developed and you know things started off quick and we're you know with with uh barrel and we're like okay it's happening and and it just it just died off um there is some development there now um things are starting to happen we may get into a busy couple of weeks, but we're we're not gonna we're not gonna reach the forecast that we were at. So it's just one of those things. Um, as we've talked about a couple of times, if you're anywhere in the eastern seaboard or in central Canada, uh, you know it's cold. It's uh, it's cooled right down. Um, so is that a sign that we're gonna have an early uh, winter or? or an early fall and cool fall. I don't know. I'll, I'll dig into, I'll dig into some stuff and do some digging around in the next couple of weeks and maybe have a, a bit of an extended forecast, maybe closer to the end of uh, September 
kind of seeing where the the model guidance is going and stuff like that. But with that cooler temperature, the good part of it is a lot of the um, a lot of the severe storms have died off. Um, obviously, it's it's rare to get those severe storms in the cooler weather. That's good. Um, I'm not seeing any real enhanced risk of severe weather coming for the next at least a week. Um, like I said, there the the only one thing that I'm I'm watching is a possibility for some um, tropical development in the Gulf of Mexico that may or may not impact. Uh, Texas in the next, say, four to seven days. It's hard to say if it's going to happen. Like I said, I mean, the, the the parameters are there. The Gulf of Mexico is warmer than it's been in a long, long time. And as I've, I've said before, you've got those storms, the storms develop. Hot water is like throwing gasoline on a fire. So, but we'll have to see what happens. Oh, well, fair enough. But is it really a bad thing that we didn't have all these bad storms? This say. Absolutely not. But then you get, and, and it's absolutely a good thing and, and, you know, saves lives, same saves property, all that, that damage, all of that stuff. That's great. On the flip side, you always have the, the naysayers or the, Oh, you told me the sky was falling. You told me it was going to be really bad. It wasn't bad. So the next time you tell me it's going to be bad, maybe yeah. I'm not going to believe you. And then it's, you, you know, you, it, yep. it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's one of those, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not trying to scare anybody and I'm not trying to fear monger anybody. It just, okay. and, and I mean, I was by far not the only one who was saying that this was going to be a big time hurricane season. A lot of the, who are people who I would call eminent experts, um, like the uh, the tropical tidbits got dot com. So Dr. Levi Cowan, he was saying the same thing, and and it just just didn't happen. Hey, we appreciate you trying to look out for us, Jeff. I yeah, rather, uh... definitely appreciate the the updates you send out every so often there when when things are looking like they're going to develop because it just it keeps my head more of on a swivel and you're a little bit more alert as to, Hey, this might be coming. This might not be coming. Like, do we want to go out for supper tonight or go to the movies or yeah, you know, let, let's just stay in. Jeff said there might be some bad weather coming. If it didn't happen, Hey, I'm not angry. Yep. And you nailed it sometimes. Some of the oh, reports absolutely. you're paying on with. So, Oh yeah. Hey, huh? This is what it is. So. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best, right? You got it. Don't be scared. Be prepared. You got, you it. got it. All right. Deal of the week. <laughs> this is a, this is good timing. Uh, Cabela's has the, the Mr. Buddy heater off uh, on sale, 22% off. So check it out. If, uh, if maybe you need uh, some heat for, I don't know, a fish camp where it's freaking cold. Um, they do run on really propane scary. though. So make sure your propane tanks are full. Yes. Just saying, yep. just yep. saying very important. <laughs> and yes, you the, these these are ones. Yes, you can run them inside. You do have to be careful. They do have um, low oxygen, low oxygen shutoffs on them and, and that kind of stuff. But tip over. still, like any you know appliance like that, just make sure that you're you're using caution. Oh, and another tip here um, yeah. from uh, Hunting Upland. Uh, and good point again. Um, speaking of propane, everyone should be uh, reloading any one pound tank, uh, one pound tanks they can find. Uh, no such thing as too many backup heat sources. And also uh, buy or make your own fire starter of cotton balls and wax. Fantastic tips. Dryer lint or cotton yep. cotton balls and uh, Vaseline. Yep. Yeah. Well, yep, you do what you do on your own time, Jeff. Is between you and the four walls. Okay. <laughs> All right. With that, uh, I'll bring episode number 247 of the Canadian Prepper podcast to an end. You can find the uh, podcast on iTunes, Spotify, of course, your uh, favorite podcast app. I'm pretty sure we're on all of them by now. Uh, please do submit a review. It uh, it does help uh, other people find us and, uh, you know, encourages the wonderful algorithms that are YouTube and Facebook and all the others. 
And we do record the record these shows live on YouTube, uh, Facebook as well. If you want an early peek at the shows, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Canadian Prepper Podcast, and click the notifications tab. That gives you an alert when we are going live. Anybody uh, wants to reach out to me, uh, you can get me at feedback at prepperpodcast.ca, or I am uh, frequently on the Discord. Denny's got a good one there in the chat. Dryer lint and sawdust. Ah, very nice. Yes, another good combination. Good combination. Anybody wants to reach out, I have got bat Brad at batbradcpp at gmail.com. All right, you can check out uh, Rapid Survival at rapidsurvival.com. Get me there on the live chat, or you can email me at feedback at prepperpodcast.ca. So thanks for joining us. Until next time, be prepared, stay safe. And keep learning. As we wrap up another insightful episode of the Canadian Prepper Podcast, we want to extend our gratitude to our listeners for joining us on this journey of preparedness. Remember, the key to survival is knowledge and readiness. If you want to support the show and engage with our community further, consider signing up for our Patreon and joining our thriving community on Discord. Links are in the description. If you enjoyed today's episode, please don't forget to subscribe, share, and leave us a review. This is the Canadian Prepper Podcast, signing off. Until next time, be prepared, stay safe, and keep learning.